we finally made it. Now we're in Vermont at the wonderful Orvis Rod Shop. Hello, this is Cheech reporting from the airport parking lot. And if Brigham doesn't get this crap out of my face, we're gonna miss our flight. Welcome to beautiful Vermont. This is garbage trucks. Orvis, or maybe not. We got stuck in New York for a night. City. So, didn't fish today. Live from New York. That show sucks. JFK. The fisheries are great around here, we've heard. We're just gonna go down the stairs like a normal person. I'd rather fish Tenkara than hang out in airports. COVID got the dogs. I don't know, I mean, where I'm from, they look a little different. When in New York, you gotta listen. Biggie, everyone thinks I just listen to stick figure and nothing else. Pretty true, but not all the way true. We're gonna start taxing again to the runway. We're about to number uh, 10 for departure. Time is 2.22. Apparently we're planted a place where they don't have paper. They just write books on wood. What is this? Somebody tell us what that is. Vermont is wet. Like I said, it's really wet. Okay, we finally made it. Now we're in Vermont at the wonderful Orvis Rod Shop. So we have Sean, who is going to be giving us a tour of the rod shop. It's pretty cool to have Orvis allow us to come in and show all you guys all of the cool stuff that makes the rods that go out the door. So we've been making rods here in the in basically uh, southern Vermont since 1856. Charles started the company uh, just about a half mile up the road. You know, we've been producing currently Helios 3, Recon, Superfine Glass, Mission, and Bamboo. Let's get in there and check them out. Let's do it. Cheech, why are we in a freezer? Well, it's for the hot dogs. It's not for the hot dogs. Uh, is it's it because of the resin that's impregnated into the material? Correct, it's thermally activated resin. So if you keep it out at room temperature, it will actually start to cure. Ah. Uh, so everything has to be kept in a freezer condition until we're ready to cut. We actually have an offsite freezer for all of our bulk storage. We pull from that once a week, bring it in here, stage it, and then it's a morning of from the time that it goes to pattern cutting. Flags get cut and into the oven. Minimize our uh, time out in air. How many different composites do you have in there? How many different types uh, of materials? In here, there's probably about 20. Like H3, we probably evaluated 60 or so different composites wow. just to get down select into just nice. the resin package and the fiber package. Very cool. And any given rod, we'll use uh, up to at least five different composites. Wow. That's what I think was, is interesting to me because like, you think just throw throw some material on a mandrel and call it good, but there's so much that goes into it's a lot going yeah. on. Let's go look in the pattern room and all right. So this is a a piece of composite. It has unidirectional carbon fiber that's running this way, and then you can see the resin that kind of holds together. Go ahead and take a piece of that. You can tell one thing's for sure. This is really stiff this way, where the fibers are going and then pretty soft this way, right? Each one of those fibers, when you get down and you think you've got one, that's all, That's another like, you know, I don't know, a couple hundred strands. So to build a fly rod, you don't just roll this stuff up 
you actually have to do some cool stuff with it. You'll see behind us the pattern cutting table is essentially cutting out flags. And when I say flags, that's the shape, looks like a flag. There's multiple flags that go in a kit to make one main flag. That main flag is then rolled around a mandrel. All of our flags are CNC cut with a razor, not a laser, to unique shapes. And then they get kitted together. So on something like this, you'll see a kitted flag. It's got unidirectional carbon going this way that gives the rod the strength and bend. And then it has scrim. That scrim itself provides the hoop strength. How all that lays up is gonna determine really the wall thickness, the load, or how stiff the section is and all that. So that's one flag that would be kitted together. The table was actually purchased right around when we dropped Helios 2 one-piece rods. And it was to make a one-piece rod because literally before that you would have a ruler, a razor, or a pattern cutting die that you would roll carbon between two, a die and a flat surface and roll it through some side of rollers. Having this really increased our ability to, to increase quality, cut on a repeatable basis, and then do some pretty fun design stuff that you can't do with straight rulers and razors. And that was probably 2014-ish. It's one of the primary pieces that got us into some of the strategy going to H3. So when it comes to the accuracy on the cuts, I mean, this certainly adds to the yeah. overall quality of what you're doing as opposed to just straight, straight cuts. cuts. Yeah, if you look at some conventional processes, you'll see a lot of uh, places, they'll layer up you know, multiple sheets of carbon and then make some pass cut on it. You remember like in yeah. high school, one of those cutting things, you put a bunch of eight and a half 11s on it, you go to whack, you're gonna like, I've got to cut a bunch of these today, you're gonna put four or five sheets on. The first one actually cuts short and then it'll, it'll pull and make all of them a different size. We were always fighting that, and the industry really fights that from a repeatability standpoint. And the end product's not going to be right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So but this is the machine that makes every t every section the same, so you can just change it in and out, no problem at all. Yes, this is this is a foundation for interchangeable parts. Cheech, you know what a mandrel looks like? Yeah. There's three mandrels. So mandrels themselves are the internal mold of a fly rod. Uh, it sets the ID or internal diameter, and then it has a taper so where it actually decreases in diameter a set thousandths of an inch yeah. uh, as it goes down the blank itself. You know, you got a lot of mandrels to run rods, yeah. you got a lot of mandrels to run R&D. To put it into fat guy terms, this is the pig, the rod's the blanket, right? Sure, you yeah. Pigs and blankets. Pigs and blankets. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, this is the pig. That's uh, awesome. The only difference is when you get your fly rod, there's no meat. Ah, Just blanket. We pull the mandrels it. out later. Healthy, healthy. I get it. Yeah. I get you. So let's go over oh, and see guys, Tom watch Rosenbauer. Out. How are you doing? What's up, buddy? Good to see you. Good it's to been see a while. you. It's been Mr. A while. Tom. Hey. Good to see you. Jeek, good to see you. Yeah. Hey, Tom. Curtis. Yep. Good to see you. Hey, Tom. I'm Nick. Hi, Nick. Nice to meet you. How are you? Good. What's going on, man? Hi, Drew. Did you, did you get new shades? Huh? You got new specs. I did, yeah. They look good, man. This guy's named Tom Rosenbauer. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's kind of new to the industry. We're really trying to help him get ahead with this company, with Orvis, right? Some casting lessons. Yeah, some casting lessons. Some fly yeah. I've myself. been mentoring Tom now for four years. Yeah? Yeah. He's gotten a lot better in those of, four one years. One of my too. best projects that I've done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. All right, let's uh, let's go to roll table. To all the folks at home, Brigham's taller than Tom. I'm not gonna bring it up, but he's a good two inches taller than Tom. Because we're gonna take this flag and apply it to the mandrel using a roll table process. So essentially, you got a mandrel located in place here, Cheech, and then you're gonna kit the flag on barely tack it. We're not going to tack this one, but we would pull the release paper, we barely tack it with a little bit of heat, get it to set in place. <music> to roll it up. Come on in the bullpen. Oh, we're getting called, called into the bullpen. So to roll it up, you'd actually put it on something like this. You would double push. This platen would come down and, and then rotate out. I'm gonna pull this part out since it's already been done and just show you that scissor motion. 
So essentially what this does is applies pressure and a little bit of heat and rolls the, the flag onto the mandrel. And the reason why it scissors like that, pop question, anybody? Yeah. Because of the angle of the mandrel. Yeah, taper. So you got a larger circumference on this end, a shorter one on that end. So the actual travel to roll up that flag on this end is less than on this end. Yeah. So we'll show that again. You guys want to see cellophane? Yeah. We love cellophane. Yeah. Okay, I like it. It's in a conventional machine, the uh, tape angle is set at 90 degrees. The tape tension will change based on the reduction in diameter. Yeah. If you have more pressure on one end than the other and you throw it in the oven, as the resins actually start to heat up, they get almost fluid, right? And they'll go to those lower pressure points, distribute to them and kind of take advantage and you get unequal distribution of resin. That's bad. Good thing is, is uh, we made an investment for H3 to buy these pivoting head cello machines that also control the tension. So it'll actually pull the tape on at different tensions as it goes down the blank itself. And it'll correct to the angle, the tape or the blank. So it's always perpendicular to it and not pulling on an angle. Wow. If you think about like scotch tape, you're like, yeah, you guys are just, you know, OCD about this. You wrap scotch tape around your finger or medical tape, you're, you're just gonna wrap straight. You're gonna get like a tight end and a loose end, a tight end, a loose end, tight end, a loose end. If you correct and you pull at an even 90 degrees to the taper of your finger, that's what we're doing here. So you get good pr pressure distribution, allowing us to make more high-end parts. Very cool. We'll watch Wally. Wally is a machine. What's up, Wally? Not much. So, Cheech, we talked about putting the sausage casing on. Yeah. So we're gonna go into the oven. It's okay. right behind us. High temperature oven, low temp oven. Low temp is recon, super fine glass, mission. High temp's all Helios. Essentially, what this is all about is the resin system itself, the high temperature cure, thermoplastic resins allow us to have better strength to weight ratio, increased impact strength, stuff like that. That, uh, and also, you know, that, that Helios feel of like just pure crisp connected yeah. fiber energy transfer on the like down in there level. Um, that's part of the secret sauce there. Yeah. So the H3 is so durable. I've got a 10 foot six weight that I just leave rigged in the boat all the time. I'm pulling it on trailers, bumpy roads. Yeah. Can't break it. Can't break it's an it. Awesome rod. Yep. Then we use these two machines here to extract the mandrel. So it's essentially a mandrel puller. Kind of hard to describe, but basically you see this little clamp with the holes through it. All the mandrels have this little groove notch in there. You basically put it through, push down, pulls the mandrel out, leaves the blank, uh, and on you go. That's been around for a little bit. It's been a lot, used. Lot of rods you can tell where that. everybody goes, like right here, to drop in and then pull it out. So Brigham, this is not a walnut cracker. Make or a sure lobster, lobster, yeah, lobster cracker. Lobster cracker. Stick your that. finger in here, Brigham. Stick it in there real quick. Yeah, a little big. Oh yeah. Well, in 14 weight butt section. Just size up that finger, Brigham. You gotta, nope, he's gotta go to the 16 weight. There you go. That's how to do it. That's how you do it. <laughs> All right, so once the blanks are out of the oven, mandrel's been extracted, uh, we're ready to go to sanding. So coming out of the oven, this is super fine glass model. The mandrel's been pulled. What you have now is the actual blank. It has the cellophane on it. You got to pull that off. We're going to do what we call a cello race. Okay. All right. I got that one started for you. You ready? What's on the table for this? What do we win? If you win, I win. You're getting nervous. I can I am, tell. No, I'm getting like Jugs are dialing going. it in. Two, three, ten car rods. Oh, perfect. Now I'm really motivated. All right. On your mark, get set, go. 
is essentially a ready to roll almost blank. So you feel those little snake bellies on there? Yeah, yeah. That's where the tape overlaps and the resin goes in and the little crack and spirals around. Do you leave that on your glass or do you sand We it used off? to leave it on our glass. We actually sand it off now and paint them. Once the cellophane's off, essentially once they pull the, the uh, cellophane off, we're going to sanding, which is pulling a rod through here, this little machine pulls it up, drops it in the tray, that pusher pushes it in, picks up this laser gate, starts sanding it off the conveyor and drops it out. And that basically just kiss sands, like barely takes off the that outer layer of epoxy. Here's the goods after sand. Nice, it's ready for paint. Ready for paint. On the, like for example, like the H3D, it's kind of this color. Do you paint those still? Yeah, oh, okay. we'll show you. Let's go back to paint. This is gonna be the big like uh, myth busters on the white label. Is it a sticker? Is it paint? Yeah. Paint. Let's go check it out. So basically, you can see in the camera, we locate the blank in. This is a heat transfer. Oh, cool. Uh, so he's lining up the spine so the label goes on appropriately. And essentially, comes through, rolls it on, transfers it, and out you go. And that is a recon, That's what, a 10-foot two-weight? 10-2. Euro rod. Yeah. Oh, Sorry, yeah. fish. Sorry, fish. <laughs> that one is going to poke some trout. Yeah. From there, they'll go in and get a clear coat put over them and paint. Very cool. It's not super So put the label on. We basically uh, paint the whole thing the label color, white, green, whatever. Uh, take it out of the oven, paint the blank color on the forward section of the butt, then label it, and then clear coat over the label. So it's not just like a slap and tag operation. It's not there's a, slap a, there's and tag. a lot that goes into getting that yeah. color and everything right. Basically a, a hole in the ground. That pot that he's pouring paint into is only about three inches tall. There's a rubber gasket with a hole in it below and then one above. What Ed's doing on the far side is just pulling down, pulling up. And we use these mock spools as our pulley system. And then they go into the oven. Instead of going to Home Depot or uh, Porter Paints, we actually have our own paint mixing machine. So everything from your UV inhibitor, the base color, the pigments, all that stuff, it gets mixed in here instead of by hand. So we have more consistent paint thicknesses, viscosities, That's way cool. um, all of that, because it matters for interchangeable parts. So it's an investment just to basically control the process even more. One of the things that we've seen with the fly tying industry is we've toured is that when you get a dye or a paint, they're not always the same. So no. you have to get it in and, and constantly be tweaking that. This is one piece of the interchangeable part yeah. effort. All, like all everywhere all we're going, where we've gone today, it's that's a huge focus, yep. I can tell, yep. which is awesome. I mean, the cool thing about interchangeable parts is if you have that level of quality, every rod's going to cast the same, have the same fighting capabilities, have the same, you know, stiffness, yeah. toughness, you know, just making parts to blueprint versus, you know, getting lucky. Yeah, and, and they're still all handmade, still yep. made here in the U.S. I mean, it's it's awesome. So you, you've kind of best of both worlds, high-end, handmade, walk through the shop, but also interchangeable part. Newer piece of equipment that we've invested in, which is an automated paint machine. So what you saw there is the old school process. This is the new school process. We, I mean, literally we set this in the floor probably about three weeks ago. Oh, wow. You need me to come back and teach you how to run it? Yeah. Okay. yeah be good. What we're doing here is the exact same process we were doing manually. We flipped it horizontally and now it's totally automated. 
So we're just running it dry with no paint in it and we'll see if it works. Start a rod company. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll tell you this one. Actually. Yeah. Folks at home, not that hard to build fly rods as we see. So just give it a try. Probably build better stuff than them anyway. So next time you come through, full production will be running through this machine. Nice. So let's go. Let's roll in and uh, do some assembly. Okay. Thanks, Sammy. Yep. You knew we were coming, what kind of preparations did you do? Uh, so we put this emergency push for help in for Cheech, yeah. just in case you got lost in the factory, Good call. anything like that, you know. Uh, you push this, it goes straight to you. Yeah. I don't know if you know this or not, but this has Wi-Fi capability and just Bluetooth that straight into your phone. Yeah. It's like a find a Cheech. This is like the DoorDash of Vermont, because like you can push it like, help me, I need a freaking hot dog right now. Right now. Or right. A taco, yeah. boom, you got one. That's it? Smart. Brig, Brig. So, a lot of people don't know this. Sean's over there, there's a secret. When stuff goes on sale in here, blue light starts to flash. So if you ever see a blue light flashing around here, grab it, because it's like 40% off. So the footwear choice here is uh, commendable. Cheech is prepared though. Well, Cheech knew there's the possibility of water in here. They don't care about me getting injured. Cheech just groaned loudly when I told him. Uh, I haven't worn closed-toed shoes for probably months. And you guys are the ones making me do it. How do you feel? I didn't make you do it. I, s I just said that there's a policy. This is assembly. Basically, at this point, we've got a full blank that's been pieced together, spined. Uh, all the fits have been qualified, checked, painted, labeled, clear-coated and it's ready to get uh, cork, reel seats, and tip tops. dots would be down mm -hmm. from the ferrule fit. Very cool. You guys pay attention to like where the spine of the rod is and yes. stuff. Okay, so yeah. that, that's important. To so you can see all these blanks that Val's got going on. There's a marker for the soft end of the spine and then it's a dot on the label actually. So these line up, real seat lines up, everything lines up all the way through the blank, all the guides and everything so uh -huh. that the rods are spined in alignment. Because who would want four springs if they weren't working together? True. Ponder that. Go. So we're boring out real seats here? Yep. Right. So there's a poly bush on the inside, and based on the diameter of the blank, we're going to actually increase the pilot hole so it slides over. So it's not just fit. masking tape? It's not just masking tape, no. told me not to film this part, but sometimes they build big old fires underneath these and just put a bunch of birds on, you know, a couple <laughs> racks of ribs. Done in like four hours right here, but sometimes they use them for fly rods too. Unfortunate, but everyone got a fish a little bit.
sit on the stool, shut the door, and then hit the laser button. Do you want me to do that right now? Yeah. You're, we're, okay. We're, oh, okay. So, yeah. Good ergonomics. Shut the door, shut the door so you have okay. good engagement and then fire laser dude this is like firing a fire freaking missile. The laser fire the laser yes dude are I, you is there gonna be like an explosion nope like that nothing's happening hit it twice okay boom dude i feel like i could do like lasik tomorrow you probably jump in could. there let's try it So that looks like a sticker. It's not, it's all laser etched. Do I get paid since I did some work here? I did yeah. four of these? Yeah. I'll let you know what my rates are. Lunch. Later. I'll work for food, that's all right. What did you say you called this machine? Client simulation device, CSD. CSD. We're gonna have you throw that into the real seat. I'm about to hook into the biggest fish of my life. Yeah. So we stick it like that. Yeah. Lock it down, nice and tight. And go up into high stick mode. High stick mode. All right, Sean, when you feel that bobber go down, I want you just to set. Get it. Okay. <laughs> so. This is more like uh, when you get hung on the bottom, drift boat's still going down, heavy water, client does not turn, tarpon's going under the boat, client does not turn the rod and let the, you know, let the reel go back out. Uh, but they say, I got it, it's a big one. The guide spins the boat around and says, no. We shall turn this fancy fly fishing pole rod into a taco. Mm -mm. Keep going. Yeah, let's speed that up. Oh, snap. So this is a nine foot eight weight. I didn't, yeah, that's crazy how far that thing is bending. <laughs> this is an H3 mm. or a, yeah. Something. It is a. It's, it's an Orvis rod, I'm Orvis guessing. Orvis rod. You're gonna fish one of these tomorrow. Oh yes, wow. even better. Wow. So at this point right now, basically you're not able to hold on this thing. Fighting butts buried in the side of you, bruising yeah. you up good. Fish is torqued, full crank under the boat. What do you think? Go further? Something's happening. Go! Holy moly. Bendo. Holy moly. That's awesome. Whenever you get that full bend, we basically start putting radio lines on, measuring how much of the curvature we get. And depending on a shorter rod, the same linear distance is gonna bend that thing over like a little glass rod. Putting like a big spay rod on, you know, 15 foot, 10 weight, that same distance would barely be getting set up for a snap tee. So we measure everything based on full curvature, not just linear pull or pounds of force or something like that. Mega tacky going into this. Like Mega tacky. Not just roll a blank and hope for the best. And I challenge you to try to put that kind of hoop and bend into a rod. You see me lately, bro? Yeah, you're pretty I'm buff. Swole. All those tacos. I know. <laughs>